is a video on the spinal pathways. We are going to go over three ascending sensory spinal pathways and two descending motor spinal pathways. Please keep in mind that this is an anatomy class and not an, not an art class. We will clearly identify what we are attempting to draw in hopes that you will figure it out. So this video is about the spinal tracts. We're going to look at ascending sensory pathways first, and then we're going to look at descending motor pathways second. With the sensory pathways, we're going to look at two pathways. The first is the posterior fununculus, medial lumiscus, and this pathway carries light touch, fine pressure, and conscious proprioception. In the sensory pathways, there is a three neuron chain, and I'm going to start out with a receptor all the way down in the big toe. And this first neuron comes up. And this is my representation of the spinal cord. We can see we have a center line down the middle of it. This is the medulla oblongata. This is the thalamus. And then this is the cerebral cortex. Since we're looking at a sensory pathway here, this is in the postcentral gyrus. So our first neuron, this is a pseudo unipolar neuron. Its cell body is in the posterior root ganglion. And its axon enters the spinal cord. It ascends the spinal cord to the medulla. In the medulla, it synapses on the second neuron and the second neuron is the one that crosses over. It crosses over and then projects to the thalamus. In the thalamus, it synapses, and that third neuron projects to the cerebral cortex where it synapses. And in order for you to be aware of any sensation, it has to reach the cerebral cortex. The second sensory pathway that we're going to look at is the anterior and lateral spinothalamic tract. Now these are actually two different tracts. We have the anterior spinothalamic, which carries itch, tickle, crude touch, and deep pressure and we have the lateral spinothalamic, which carries pain and temperature. I'm only going to draw in one pathway because they follow the same route and the same neurons cross over in the same places. So once again, we have our receptor down in the big toe, and the axon of the pseudo-unipolar comes up to the posterior root ganglion where the cell body is then it enters the spinal cord. It synapses on the second neuron immediately. And this second neuron crosses over, ascends the spinal cord to the medulla. It synapses on the third neuron, and that projects to the cerebral cortex. So now I'm going to draw in the other side, and we can see what happens when we have an injury that produces a hemisection to the spinal cord. Now I've drawn in both sides so that we can see we have the right side and the left side. And so this is our right big toe and our left big toe. So if we get a hemisection on the right hand side of the spinal cord, we can see that we are going to lose the sensation of light touch, fine pressure, and conscious proprioception on the same side but we're going to lose itch tickle, crude touch, deep, deep 
pressure and temperature on the opposite side. The same is true if we cut through the left side. We're going to lose conscious proprioception, light touch, and fine pressure on the left side, but we're going to lose itch, tickle, deep touch, and crude pressure from the right side. The next pathway we are going to show you are your descending pathways. These are two neuron motor pathways, the lateral corticospinal, which controls skeletal muscles of your limbs, and your anterior corticospinal tract, which controls the skeletal muscles of your axial skeleton, such as your ribs. So again, we have drawn the cerebral cortex, the medulla, and our representation of the spinal cord. For the lateral corticospinal tract, which controls the skeletal muscles of your limbs, these are approximately 70 to 90 percent of the neurons leaving your cortex. The first neuron originates in the precentral gyrus of the cortex, enters the medulla, and immediately crosses over. It goes down the spinal cord, and synapses with its second lower motor neuron, which then immediately leaves the spinal cord. This is the lateral corticospinal tract, so we are going to use the example of our thumb or hand. For the anterior corticospinal tract, these neurons are about the remaining 10, remaining 10 to 15 percent. They originate in the cerebral cortex, enter the medulla, and stay traveling down the spinal cord on the same side as which they entered. When they reach the level of the spinal cord where they are going to exit, they cross over to the other side and then synapse with their lower motor neuron. And immediately exit the body. Again, the anterior cortical spinal tract serves the skeletal muscles of your axis. In our example, this is our ribs. So, since I can't draw a rib, we're just going to write the word rib. Now we're going to go ahead and draw in the bilateral representation, the neurons for both sides, to give you an example of what happens in a hemisection to your upper and lower motor neurons. What we have drawn here is neurons from both sides of the body. We have the right hemisphere and the left hand and left rib, and we have the left hemisphere and the right hand and right rib. You can see if I was to have a hemisection, an injury to the right side of my spinal cord, I would lose all of my motor limb function on the same side. However, I would lose the function to my left ribs, the ribs on the opposite side. The same thing would happen if I was to injure the left side of the spinal cord. I would lose all motor function to the limbs on that same side of the injury. However, I would lose motor function to the ribs on the opposite side because these neurons cross over after the, after the injury.